So one last thing before we turn it over to Cheryl, because we have a, a full full program ahead of us tonight. <clears throat> so Startup Sack or Startup Happy Hour would not be held possible without uh, the support from Startup Sack's founder, he Startup Sack's sponsors, who you can see on the screen there, Witten Law, Smud, Bender Insurance, Nivigen, Stoll Reeves, Weintraub Tobin, Ernst Young, Clifton Larson Allen, and Modetta Ventures. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let's um, sh spotlight Cheryl and give control. All right. Well, thank you. Hey, uh, Startup Sack, thank you so much for having Fourth Wave um, again this June as we kick off our 2021 uh, cohort recruiting. And so excited to have a number of people here today who are running the program this year to share uh, all that's going on. Um, and then also we have three people from uh, our 2020 cohort who are with me, who are gonna talk about their experience. And I hope we have some entrepreneurs in the audience tonight who are considering applying or who have already applied uh, for our 2021 cohort. You'll get a chance to ask questions hopefully a few questions, if not, put them in chat and we'll um, answer them uh, afterwards. So uh, I wanted to first say a little bit about uh, last year. Boy, what a year. Uh, we were Last year we were kicking off um, our 2020 cohort and I, I thought it would be fun to just go through a few of our learnings um, from last year. Uh, first of all, um, one thing we learned was there is a lot of female uh, technology founder talent out there. Uh, last year, we had targeted having 10 entrepreneurs, which was an expansion from our original cohort, which was seven, um, 10 entrepreneurs in the program. And we end up, so ended up selecting 13. It was very, very difficult to get it to 13. Um, there were just an amazing amount of high potential uh, women-led tech companies with traction um, and just with amazing, uh, amazing founders. And so that is very exciting. And we're just really excited to, to welcome the next cohort um, coming in. And I also want to say that 13 out of 13 completed um, our 2020 uh, cohort. Um, we're going to hear about some of the successes they've had, but they've gone on to raise since January, just January, six months collectively, well over $5 million. Uh, we have one uh, that is just starting in Y Combinator, and they were selected to other prestigious uh, programs after, after Fourth Wave. So um, that's really exciting. The second thing we you know, we, we learned um, last year was our first year partnering uh, with the Carlson Center um, at Sacramento State. And we learned what great partners uh, they are and what a wonderful program uh, the team there has put together. Um, we had, of course, Cameron uh, Law, Jesse Becker, Alexander, Arlene Miranda, and then Dale Carlson himself, who was quite involved with us last year. Um, in providing resources um, for our weekly programmatic offerings. Um, and then um, also we did two major events at Global Entrepreneurship Week, which the Carl Center, Carlson Center and their partners uh, put on in November. And we had, um, we had a investor salon. Uh, we had investors from all over the country attend. Um, we, you know, the, the, the funding that our cohort has got is truly international. So that's, that's kind of exciting as well. Um, and then we had a wonderful community panel discussion, uh, again, uh, sponsored by the Carlson Center. So I want to just take this chance to say thank you uh, to all of you. And we are really looking forward to partnering again um, this coming year. And we're even expanding where we have more EIRs. Um, that are coming on board, uh, who you will all meet uh, this coming year. And then we have two um, Sacramento State students who are student fourth wave interns, and they both also have their own startups. So we're, you know, reaching down into the student body this year um, to really get integrated with fourth wave. So 
really excited again about that, that partnership. And the third thing um, we learned was we have, and you're going to hear more about this tonight as we uh, hear from our cohort from last year and Jesse Becker, Alexander talking about the details of the program that we're running, but our leadership coaching uh, and our wonderful, wonderful coaches, uh, I see a few of them on the call. Um, we have world-class uh, leadership coaches uh, that work one-on-one -on -one with each of our mentors or, or each of our cohort uh, members. And then we also have weekly uh, leadership programming that they run. Um, and these are, you know, these are very experienced coaches. Many of them have worked with, uh, all of them have worked with amazing startups uh, that have gone on to billion dollar exits such as Dropbox, Pinterest and others. Um, and so that we learned uh, also was a really powerful part of our program. And in our coaching uh, section, we really work on getting from a to me leadership style, which is things are happening to me all around me and I'm trying to react to a by me. I'm a creator. I'm a powerful creator of my company, of my environment, of my team, and I can create and co-create things um, by me rather than being reactive. And if you want to know more about that, you, you're, you're going to hear a little and uh, apply and then you'll, you'll really learn what that means. Um, and then the fourth thing, our last thing here that um, I think everybody learned last year, but we definitely learned was that the virtual format worked pretty well. Um, we ran everything virtually uh, for 16 weeks uh, to beginning to end. And many of us did not meet in person until after, well, almost all of us did not meet in person until after uh, those 16 weeks were done. Uh, yet we had amazing, uh, amazing impact and outcomes. And what we learned is, and especially as we look at female entrepreneurs, um, it really saves time with our busy schedules. Often we had a number of cohort members who have young ch children and they're running their, uh, their companies and the virtual format really allows a lot less friction in terms of the time uh, to do the program. Uh, also for our mentors, we we're able to broaden out our mentor base uh, from all over California um, and a little bit beyond. So we had you know, a broader base. Um, and then also uh, we were able to broaden who can apply. So we will take, just as last year, we'll take 60% of the cohort uh, from Sacramento area and 40% of the cohort from outside of Sacramento. So we're able to have a broader reach in terms of who we're working with. Um, and that worked, that worked very well. So we're, we're going to continue that with selected in-person events that you'll be, be, be hearing more about. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, go into introducing our founder of Fourth Wave, uh, Nancy Perlman. And I'd really like Nancy for you to share kind of the inspiration and the intent and behind the founding of Fourth Wave uh, and, and any other little anecdotes you, you'd like to, to share. Thank you so much. And um, welcome everyone. And thank you to Startup SAC and also to the Carlson Center for providing this awesome forum for us to talk about um, Fourth Wave. So um, for those of you who are just hearing about Fourth Wave for the first time, it's something that I started in Los Angeles back way back in 2016, I um, had a stint with Mayor Garcetti's office for a couple of years, very focused on tech and innovation. But while I was there, um, the mayor's um, prioritizing of gender equity along with his wife's priority of that um, really made an impact on me. And when I stepped out of the mayor's office, I turned my attention to creating a program that could really bridge that gap um, for women in tech and um, partnered with the mayor's tech council, with the mayor's office and launched this program that I kind of piloted in Los Angeles and then had the good fortune of bringing to Sacramento with the advent of the Rails program, um, received a grant from Mayor Johnson's office and um, had 
incredible support from Mayor Steinberg's office as we've continued down the road. Um, but the aside from that gap, my intention was really to um, highlight and spotlight the narrative of female entrepreneurs and the power they can bring to economies and cities. And my experience working in Mary Garcetti's office, which was my first um, time ever to really connect with government in any way, besides voting, which I felt very virtuous about, um, opened me up to how powerful that platform can be. So um, I was really thrilled that my second connection in the mayoral world was with Sacramento's office. Um, and that just proved out my, um, my idea that creating these alliances really could help shift the perception of how female entrepreneurs are perceived, how they're presented in that narrative. Um, I think most people on this, uh, in this meeting are aware of the slim funding that goes towards female entrepreneurs. And our vision is to, is to change that in a full, full way by providing um, this accelerator program, which is, as Cheryl was talking about, we have just this incredible group of business mentors. And it is our leadership coaching, which provides an, an equal backbone to the, um, to the program. And I think as, as we go along and you hear from the founders who participated last year, what that meant for them in terms of how they entered the program, what they were looking for initially and what they came away with. Um, there were a lot of shifts that happened and transformation that happened in the course of the 16 weeks. And, um, and yeah, we were really grateful that we were able to do it virtually and um, I'm just going to speak for myself, much to my surprise, because Zoom is not always optimal for creating intimacy, but we were, it, it really did that for us. And the um, group connected in a powerful way that um, uh, was wonderful. So very grateful to have had that experience. And also I want to say very appreciative of our sponsors and again, the support from the Carlson Center and that newfound relationship that has just been you know, phenomenal. So thank you. Well, well, Nancy, thank you for bringing Fourth Wave to Sacramento in 2017. And it's been a delight of ours to, to, part, to, to have you and, and your vision come up here. Um, so I, I'd, like to, I'd like to now, um, most of you probably know Jessie Becker Alexander. I'd like to introduce her. She is our, uh, an EIR at the Carlson Center and is our primary program uh, manager this year uh, for Fourth Wave. And Jessie's gonna go over, for those of you who are applying or considering applying, she's gonna go over the program uh, in a little more depth, you know, kind of what, what we're gonna be doing uh, more specifically. Uh, so Jessie, go ahead. Great, thank you, Cheryl, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see some of you. I, I feel like I've met many of you virtually, actually. So it's good to see many of you again here today. Um, so I'll just say I'm an entrepreneur in residence at the Carlson Center, and it's been one of my favorite things to work with Fourth Wave at, as a part of that role. Um, my background, I'm a, a co-founder and a founding CEO of a medical device company. Um, and in that position, I've had the benefit of being involved with lots of different incubators, accelerators, all sorts of programs. Um, and I will say one of the greatest things about Fourth Wave is a true focus on leadership and really developing founders' strengths for who they are and really allowing that to come to light and create beautiful things for the world. Uh, life-changing things for the world. So um, you'll hear more about that from our some of our alumni. Uh, that's probably more fun than hearing me just slobber about it. But uh, as Cheryl said, I wanted to share a couple quick slides, just uh, if you're a visual learner like me, hopefully that'll be helpful. Just give me one second here. All right. And, so, and I wanna mention that Jessie's really modest. She had her company had a, a multi-hundred million dollar exit in the last few months um and uh so she's she's raised money 
and and she she's seen the full cycle of of a company and is 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 an amazing uh, value here to uh, to Forthwith. Well, thanks, Cheryl. I'm going to turn red now. But um, <laughs> anyway, I uh, would love to tell you all a little bit about the program at Forthwith. So high level, uh, really what this program is about is helping founders work on themselves and work on their businesses in a way that will help them transform as individuals and transform their companies into something that's truly impactful. Uh, and the way that we do that is in three phases. It's pretty straightforward. We start really, really up. Um, we start really heavy handed with the leadership training. Uh, and then we move in our second phase to looking at actually filling those business gaps. It's not all about leadership. It's also about looking at your business holistically and understanding what needs the most work. And Finally, how do you tell a good story about it and pitch and raise some money? That's our really high level. Cheryl, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I'm just going to add that um, in the in this at the very beginning, you will get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, leadership coach, and you'll also get a one-on-one -on -one business mentor, someone that has background in your particular vertical. So, for instance, Jesse will mentor somebody in the med tech space. Uh, we have mentors in enterprise software and consumer tech and uh, clean tech. So almost any vertical that you're in will match you uh, with, with a mentor who has built a company in that space. And they will work with you on the gap analysis because we, what we'll do is identify where on your, your business plan and where you are, what needs to be filled to accelerate you forward as fast as can, as fast as can be. And that's, you know, also what we do on the leadership side, you'll see where there's uh, a lot in terms of understanding our strengths, our areas for development, um, some of our limiting beliefs and working on those. So that's all I had to add, Jesse, but keep going. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, so a little, feel free to jump in anytime, Cheryl or Nancy. Uh, um, absolutely. So in our first, in the first phase of the program, uh, we focus in on that leadership training, like Cheryl said, and it's that phase is five weeks long and it starts with an intensive deep dive into several different leadership tools, including Enneagram, conscious leadership and equip power tools. Uh, and that intensive leadership coaching really gives you a foundation to understand some of these new concepts to some uh, or deep learning for others. Uh, and that will then be followed up regularly throughout the entire program. Also during this time is when you get to know your one-on-one -on -one business mentor and really under help them get to know you and your business uh, so that they can best help you figure out what you need to work on over the course of the program. Um, anything to add, Cheryl? Cool. All right. Uh, second phase is all about getting stuff done. Um, so this phase is six weeks, six weeks long and is really working really closely on a weekly basis with your business mentor. And one of the other really incredible things about this program is that our uh, pool of subject matter experts and everything from PR to legal to financing to you name it, is really incredible and really committed to helping each of our cohort members um, fill whatever those gaps are, plug you into, uh, you know, plug you into different resources, whatever you might need. Um, so this phase is really when you start working on those business gaps. And of course, continuing with that weekly leadership practice, because that's where the transformation really happens. And moving on. Just, just like any good accelerator program, we have to be able to tell our stories at the end of it and hopefully go raise some money. So uh, this final phase is four weeks long um, and we work with all the companies to be ready to pitch for an investor salon, um, which is an incredible group of individuals. Uh, Cheryl, I don't know if you wanna chat a little bit about that, but, um, and that will happen during Global Entrepreneurship Week uh, as one of the events. Yeah, you know, we've had a really um, great uh, 
participation from venture capitalists who help with the pitch prep preparation. We have both Bay Area and local VCs that work one-on-one uh, -on -one and in groups with our cohort. Uh, so, so you'll get you get some really um, you really get some great uh, advice and help and transformation in terms of telling telling your story and telling it in a way uh, that is meaningful to a, an investor audience. Absolutely. And last but not least, important dates. Hopefully, uh, if you're here listening to us today and interested in the program, this provides a little bit more insight into what you'll be getting into. Um, and uh, so our important dates are our applications are live on the website, uh, which Laura shared in the chat. Thank you, Laura, for doing that. Um, and those applications are due July 11th. Um, we'll be having finalist, a round of finalist interviews on July 19th and 20th, and the program itself kicks off on August 2nd, runs all the way through to November. Um, that's all I got for today. Uh, Can I add one little Absolutely. Little comment? Okay. I just want to say um, two quick things. One, um, on the leadership front, um, I don't know how many people on the call have experienced leadership training before. Um, I've done some very corporate training and conscious leadership in the Enneagram and the equip tools that we offer is just this whole other realm and paradigm around leadership training. Um, so it's, it's really a special experience. And I think you'll be hearing more about that from the entrepreneurs. The other thing is that um, both during the program, as Jesse has outlined, there's an incredible amount of support for the founders. And then after the program, we have continued a monthly connection. And of course, if anyone ever needs anything, um, we have a Slack channel and there's a lot of communication and we're very available to continue supporting. So it's not like a, you know, date, end of week 16 comes and the end. We're, we're very much about continuing to support and um, really um, be there as a community. That's all. Thanks, Jesse. That was a great overview. Yeah. Thank. Thanks, Jesse. And um, got a full full schedule <laughs> for the, for for twenty twenty one. We will be doing some select in person. We expect that uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week will have in person events and. We'll have some select fall in-person events um, with a cohort as well. So that that's ex exciting for this year. We're all going through that, that change now. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to bring in three of our 2020 uh, cohort. Uh, we have Amy Wister with RevShop. We have Anna Strauss with Spark. And we have Sarah Park with Zero Five. So hi, everybody. All right, so what I'd like to do is I'd just like to go around and I'd like just each of you to just give, you know, talking to the, the entrepreneurs who are applying in the audience, um, you know, why you applied and, you know, what, what, why you applied and then what, what you took away, what was the biggest impact um, it took away for you personally and from a business perspective. Uh, let's start with, let's start with Amy. I'm so excited to be here and to share this. My purpose for applying into fourth wave was twofold. Um, it was one to be a part of an accelerator that was purely focused on females, not to alienate our incredible male counterparts, but it felt like good timing um, for me and for our startup at the time. And the second purpose was to do exactly what the name says, which is accelerate. It's really quite amazing to become part of a program where what you may have accomplished in eight to nine months happens over a three month period and you're deeper into the topics and your output is uh, far more impactful. That was, that was my experience. And the second question was Cheryl, yeah. So, what was uh, what was the impact? I mean, just tangible impact. What what changed for you? Um, so, or, or name a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, 
our actual trajectory changed in a sense that we up to the accelerator had been very focused on our technology, but not as focused on our go to market strategy. And that was identified in the gap analysis for us specifically. And as a result, I will use the term manifested because if you're any part of this program, you will understand that quantum physics will be a large part of your experience. Um, we manifested a chief product officer who is bringing something, something to the table that the current team at the time um, did not have and wouldn't have been able to propel forward. So if there is one tremendously tangible human piece that came um, to the table, I would say it would be her. And if anybody likes to hear about manifesting uh, XEOs into your, into your companies, I can be reached offline about that. Uh, the second thing, personally, as a leader, I, uh, like Cheryl and probably some other people on this call, I had been through incredibly uh, institutional type leadership training through Intel Corporation and some uh, international nonprofits. And neither of them focused on this concept of conscious leadership. In fact, I think I thought I knew what that was coming into the program. Uh, but as a result of being in the program, I discovered what it really was. And this concept that things come through us as leaders. And if it really is effortless and comes with ease and flow, it is meant to be and we are in the right place. And we're not only in the right place, but we are in a place where we can give all that we have to the people who we are serving inside of our corporations, as well as um, the folks who are consuming our products. So that was a type of mindset that I, again, thought I had been exposed through through these institutional um, environments, but it turns out that I really had not. So I, I'm incredibly appreciative and, and grateful for that part of of the program um, and would also say the community continues. It is being in the program is just the first step in this process. I think that we, um, I suspect uh, that there will be years of relationships and community that will result in not only this cohort, but the cohort before us and the cohorts um, to follow. In fact, I could, I, if you could get really close to me in the camera right now, you could see I have, I have chills when I speak to that topic. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for sharing, Amy. And it's been so great to watch both your personal growth as well as Rev Shop just take off with new people and uh, new opportunities. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear from from Anna. Uh, maybe you could share with us a little bit about what you thought, uh, or the reason why you applied going in, and then kind of the impact that that uh, you ha it had on on you and your growth at Spark. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first and foremost, it was such a transformative experience for me, both personally and professionally. What instantly drew me to Fourth Wave is the holistic approach. So like Amy was talking about, it wasn't just focused on the business, but also building up your leadership skills. And I can hands down say that I am a better mother, wife, founder, entrepreneur all across the board because of fourth wave. And one of the main reasons why I was applying is I was actually in an accelerator prior um, Founders Institute in San Francisco, and it really helped build some of the foundational pieces but now I was ready to really scale Spark. I wanted to take a deeper look, identify potential blind spots, and really see how we could start escalating our growth. Um, and the program hands down did that for me. So a couple of the outcomes that came from Fourth Wave, um, first, one of the most exciting to me was a new revenue channel, um, something that we were already doing. And one thing that I love is Fourth Wave gives you an opportunity to slow down, to speed up you actually get time to think about where you're at, what's happening in your business. And it captured, I mean, just within this one week of being in the program, I was able to invoice out $10,000 on a project that I would have completely overlooked if I was going at the speed of light, like most of us entrepreneurs are doing. Um, another thing just from a personal perspective is I found out that one of my limiting beliefs is I attributed stress and working seven days a week to success. 
if I wasn't going a million miles a minute or making things happen every second, then I wasn't successful. And identifying that and really getting to the core of that and shifting my behaviors, that's where the part comes in where I'm a better wife and mother um, and just a friend and a family member. And, you know, I am so grateful to Fourth Wave. Um, I, I'm just curious to see where I would have been a year from now without this program um, and just continuously working as tough as I was. And I still don't get me wrong. I still work very hard. But now that I found this balance and more self-care, I'm actually producing at a way higher level and Spark is thriving much more. Um, the last thing that I'll say is from a fundraising perspective, that was so instrumental for me. So one thing that was happening to me prior to fourth wave is I would go into pitches and I'm in HR tech. And by the end of the pitch, I would have people that were HR professionals that would say, hey, I need your solution in our workplace. But they weren't saying, hey, I want to invest in Spark. So I'm like, where is this disconnect here? It's great that they want my solution. Don't get me wrong. I need that client revenue. But how do I get investors excited about the potential of Spark and reshaping my story, the presentation, the design and bringing that together? I closed out my round within four months after fourth wave. One of the investors from the salon has already teed me up with two other investors that are lining up for our next round in it's just been such a blessing. Oops, awesome, Anna. Thank you so much. And Anna, her mentor was Janine Yancey from our 2017 cohort. Janine's gone on. Uh, she's also in enterprise HR tech, and she's gone on to be named one of the fastest growing, growing private companies in California by Inc. Magazine last year. And uh, has gone on to raise over 10 million in Series A funding. So we we also uh, have that community effect where we are bringing in uh, those of you who have been through and now have raised money to help with the next cohort. So uh, that, I know that was a benefit to you to, to have that relationship with Janine. That was huge. She was one of my, and still is, regional heroes or just a business hero in general. And so I was definitely putting it out to the universe, like, please let me get Janine. And, you know, we've actually continued the conversations even after the program where we're still talking every couple of weeks and looking at the business and how I can be better. And I am so grateful for her. Thank you. All right, Sarah, Sarah Park. Um, I would love to hear uh, your perspective on, you know, going into fourth wave, uh, why you applied, what you were hoping to get out of it. And then if you could share the impact that the program has had on you and then uh, the growth of your business over the last uh, six months. Sure. Um, so the reason I first applied to fourth wave was the leadership concept was very unique to me. I, we've gone through different accelerator programs and it was all about business, you know, how to build your business plan to, you know, how to build the team culture or whatnot. But I always felt like it was more of a one-way communication where guests would come in and just, you know, give a lecture. Or when you match up with mentors from those programs, it would be, you know, two or three times just connecting for some feedback and that relationship wouldn't, you know, really develop. Uh, so this program seemed a lot more personal. And after we did an interview, I was more convinced that, okay, this is the community I would love to be a part of. So that's why I applied. And once we got into the program, I think Anna put it, put it in a perfect way where it helps you to slow down to speed up. Um, it was so helpful and refreshing to have some time to focus on me Whereas when you run a business, things are happening constantly and you just have to, you know, go and do that. Um, and you don't really get the time to, you know, uh, channel the energy to yourself and, you know, see how, where you're at and why are, why are you frustrated? Why are you so stressed? And how is that impacting your work or your personal life? So that was really helpful. And um, I think Amy and Anna both covered that, you know, it helps you find balance between work and life when it's very difficult to find that as an entrepreneur. 
and that helped um, and also that uh, mentor relationship it was you get matched with one mentor for business and one mentor for um, I don't know what would be a good word for it for your mental health I would say um, <laughs> um, and they're always available you know they were always available when I needed help with legal stuff they had someone they knew if I needed someone for finan financial stuff they knew you know someone who could help us or they could be they were the ones who could help us with so that uh, relationship really helped me uh, develop the story to pitch to investors and at the end of the program after the program ended uh, we actually connected with a couple of investors who were uh, in that investor salon um, and we um, as we were continuing the conversation we were able to close the round with someone else but um, we got to interact with investors and because you know because we got help from um, not just business-wise, but also uh, from the per personal perspective. Uh, I think it really helped me kind of tone down the pitch a little bit and make it more personal. And that definitely helped us uh, close the seed round as well. Yeah. So Sarah, uh, you, you closed your full round already. Um, it was a couple million dollars, I think. Something like yeah, that? It was uh, yeah. two million dollars. Uh, we the conversation went really fast. So once we started talking, um, it took us about three and a half weeks to close the round. Yeah, you did a great job. Great job. Okay. Well, what, what I guess look, the next question that I have because we've got a few more minutes uh, to hear from you all. Uh, what? If, uh, what? advice might you have for those on the call here or the meeting here considering to apply but thinking may I may not have enough time I'm just you know really busy I've got a million things to do with my business and although this sounds great I just don't know if I can make time for it which we hear a lot from uh, perspective uh, entrepreneurs so um, who wants to who wants to take that Amy you want to you want to start off on that uh, what, 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 any other advice that you might have for those thinking to apply, about applying? You'll never have enough time, ever. <laughs> um, and as a leader, it's our role to invest in ourselves. I mean, the more we pour in to this leadership role, the more successful we will be with our teams and with the folks who are consuming the product it's, and we, as Anna pointed out, we get in this hamster wheel on occasion and somebody has to come into the hamster wheel and say, stop that and stop doing that. You can need to step off that wheel and come invest in this. And when we do that mindfully, the, the benefit is shared between all the energy and all the people who, who are involved. I think that anybody on this call, you know, male or female can look back on a time in their lives when they invested in themselves when there wasn't enough time and it turned out there was actually plenty of time and time in many cases became a surplus and not a deficit as a result. Well said. Yeah, I love that. And I second it. It's like I said before, I think it's the best way for me to explain it for the impact it's had on me is to slow down to speed up. It's when you're in the heat of the moment this program going through it and identifying potential limiting beliefs, potential blind spots, being surrounded by a community that understands the trials and tribulations and successes that you're going through, you actually walk away with more time than you had before. It's the same 24 hours in the day, but you're far more effective and how you approach the day is far more successful. Um, so that time that I invested in fourth wave actually opened up a whole lot more time and I am far happier. Um, so anyone who's hesitant, if that is an area of concern that should completely go away because that's definitely nothing that should hold you back from this experience. Um, I think you guys covered everything I had to say. Um, uh, I think it's the community that really you know helps you to um, 
you to feel more comfortable with what like where you are at right now and then that helps you become more efficient with uh, your work and your personal life and also having that community it's a great resource it's a huge resource i reach out to in our cohorts members uh, personally and on Slack channels all the time if I need help with anything. And someone has always have something to share. So that's a great resource where you can benefit from, definitely. Yeah, and Sarah, just to kind of piggyback off of that, one thing I love, you think about all the time it takes to find the answers that you need or the resources that you need, and now it's just a Slack message away. I mean, Amy and I are having a meeting next week. Sarah and I just connected last week around social media tactics and it's like within a few seconds you have what you need <laughs> that's a that's that's a good that's a, that's a good story we, we have a story of one of our entrepreneurs who's, who's not here tonight um was having an interview for y combinator and she got on slack and said i need to talk to somebody who got who did the interview and got into y combinator and like within an hour, we had her with an inter with on the call with somebody who had already gone through Y Combinator, and of course, then she was accepted. Um, so that 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 is a real story of of something that happened a, a month or a few months ago. Anyway, uh, all all great all great information. Um, I don't know. Do we have um, do we have any questions, Jesse, in the chat from uh, anybody that? is thinking about applying and yeah great question there was one about are there any location requirements so okay well uh no uh we run the program on pacific time uh so that you know you have to adapt to pacific time although we're going to be running it virtually so we're accepting applications uh, from anywhere uh 60 percent uh of the cohort will be filled uh from the greater Sacramento region. Uh, I assume we'll have many wonderful entrepreneurs from that region. Uh, and the remaining 40% will come uh, from outside the region. And Sarah is a perfect example. Her company is based in San Francisco, although she spent most of 2020 in Korea and did the cohort on, uh, on Pacific time for, from Korea, which sometime was in the early morning or middle of the night hours, right, Sarah? <laughs> It was usually one to four in the morning, but it worked out. So, <laughs> Great. yeah. There's, there's, oh, sorry. I was going to say there's another question in the chat, Cheryl. How far along do you have to be in your business venture to be accepted? Yeah, that's a great question. So, Fourth Wave is really designed for uh, women who, who have some traction already in their tech business, but are looking to kind of go to that next level. And we, define traction pretty broadly. So we like to see uh, maybe some revenue, maybe some funding, either seed or friends and family funding, uh, an MVP, uh, maybe a customer or a partner. You don't have to have all of those things, but we like to see one or two of those. So we kind of define that as having some traction. Uh, you also, we we have all full-time, you know, people have already committed to their ventures full-time and we really are working on getting them that next seed round or, you know, kind of, we have one that I would call kind of more of a, who's just closing more of a series A. So if you're kind of in that, in that stage, it's a good fit. If you're a little bit earlier, uh, we'd like to know about you. We're, we're happy to chat with you. Uh, we have uh, Cameron and Jesse are running earlier programs. Um, at the Carlson Center, and then when you get to that traction phase, uh, then you know it's it's a good fit for Fourth Wave. I expect we'll have some uh, new applicants this year that applied last year that were a little early, so uh, that have been doing work with the Carlson Center, and I know now are further along. Um, the other thing is we also like to see you know people, as you probably heard, who are open to the leadership aspect, you know, open and curious about that. And another important attribute, I think, for people who apply. I don't All right. Questions. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and, and any others? Okay. Well, hey, thank you, everybody. And 
Uh, you have all of our contact information on the website. You can reach out to us or reach out to Jesse at the Carlson Center. If you have any questions, we look forward to having um, all of you who are interested apply. And, and thanks for listening. Uh,